Hello guys, welcome again to my YouTube channel, Thoughts of a Theorist. And today, we're going to discuss insights on density functional theory, which, as we know, is a very powerful computational method in describing or investigating the properties of atoms and molecules. As we know, the typical way of describing or of solving the properties of atoms and molecules is to solve them quantum mechanically using the Schrodinger equation. Here, we look for the wave function that minimizes the expectation value of our Hamiltonian over the wave function and thus will minimize our energy. Let me just change my pointer. Okay, that's it. However, if we're going to look on the equation of this Hamiltonian operator, it actually leads us to a very long and hustling equations. So the Hamiltonian operator is given by this uh, equation, which basically is a summation of these summations of these energies. So we have here the kinetic energies of our electron and our nucleus. We have here the energies due to our nucleus-electron interaction and our nucleus-nucleus interaction. So basically, this is very long and this is very computationally expensive, and it's not it's not so practical to use this one, especially if we are limited with our computational resources. So thanks to density functional theory, because instead of looking on the wave function, why not we look on the electron density, which, as we know, contains all the information that we need to describe the properties of interest. Now, the same is being expected in density functional theory, where we also look for the electron density, because in the Schrodinger equation, we look on the wave function. So now, we shifted our attention to the, the electron density, where we also minimize our energy. And we always do this one for us to really see the properties, no? or to have accurate results for the calculations of uh, interest. So we also minimize our energy, and to do that, we interact our electron density, which is given by rho as a function of the spatial coordinates r, and we interact this one uh, into the nuclei or with the nuclei and add it a certain universal functional. Okay, now the heart of density functional theory lies on this Hohenberg Kohn theorems. There are actually two theorems that basically describes the overall of the density functional theory. So theorem number one states that the ground state energy is a unique functional of the electron density. Or mathematically, uh, that is E is equal to E as a function of this um, electron density, which is also a function of our spatial coordinates. So this theorem implies that the electron density is all we need to calculate the energy functional. Thus, Whenever we find the energy, the Hamiltonian equation in the Schrodinger equation or in our uh, equation in density functional theory will always be solvable in a more decent way. To find the ground state energy, theorem number two has been considered. It says that the electron density that minimizes the energy of the overall functional is the true ground state electron density, or that is, we have this one, and if we're going to derive this one or expand or extend this one mathematically, we really can find that this is following our variational principle. Now, the Hohenberg and Kohn uh, theorems actually lead to a fundamental statement, which says that the ground state energy and density correspond to the minimum of some functional subject to the constraint that the density contains the correct number of electrons. Now, in this figure, we can see the comparison of the Schrodinger equation in the density functional theory's views on many body systems. Here, in this left uh, part of this figure, we can see a many body system of interacting particles. And this is the view of the Schrodinger uh, equation, or based on the Schrodinger equation. And, of course, we want to calculate the properties of the system. However, in the density functional theory, we consider a fictitious system of non-interacting consum particles, as we call it. And these particles have the same density 
with the density, no, or the, the, the density of this non-interacting particles or of this system is the same as the density of this um, system as viewed in the Schrodinger equation. Now, in density functional theory, these non-interacting particles are subject to a certain effective potential, which is given by this equation. Now, we can see in the last part of this equation an additional um, term, which we call as the, or the exchange correlation functional, which plays a viable role for the success of density functional theory. The exchange correlation functional actually contains all the approximations that we need for the success of DFT. It contains the truncations, it contains the error for calculating the, the, the kinetic energies in the orbitals. Now we have the hard G potential and so on. And in the literature, there are many exchange correlation functionals that we can have. We have the local density approximation, which deals with the local density of our electrons. Uh, we also have here the gradient corrected exchange correlation functionals. We have the generalized gradient approximation, which deals on the local density and on the gradient or the first derivative of our election density. We also have here the meta generalized gradient approximation. We have the hybrid functionals and so on. Now, in density functional theory, we also use this so called modified external potential or, or this pseudo potential as we call it, because normally, the core electrons barely influence the electronic structure of material. So we need to smoothen our core wave function for fast and accurate calculations. Now, there are many pseudopotentials available. We have the norm-conserving pseudopotential. We have the ultra-soft pseudopotential and the projected augmented wave pseudopotential, which we will be discussing later in our next videos. Now, the question is, how are we going to implement density functional theory in our calculations? So we actually use this iterative solution of the quantum equations. Now this is a self-consistent field calculation. And as we know, if we have a self-consistent calculation, then we can then proceed now with the calculation of the quantities of interest. We can start with the calculation of the energy, and we have the forces in accordance with the hellman feynman theorem and so on. So the self-consistent field calculation is just like this. Now, of course, we have to construct our uh, initial nuclear or in initial potential, or we also have to construct our, our, our structures of interest. We have to um, consider the type of Bravais lattice vector that we have to consider, and then we initialize our election density, and then perform our quantum equations, and then if the calculated election density is the same as the guessed uh, election density, we can say that we have a self-consistent calculation. However, if we don't have a self-consistent calculation, then we have to return to, uh, to, to this, what is this, to this step, and then go on with another iteration. Now, we implement this one to uh, the softwares or to these applications. We have the quantum espresso, we have Siesta, we also can use CASTEP, and we have the VASP or the Vienna Ab Initio uh, package simulation or uh, simulation package. But uh, for me personally, I am using Quantum Espresso because it's very friendly and it's, um, it's very satisfying. The results are really very satisfying. So if you have questions, uh, please, you may just send your questions through email or you may add your comments on the comment section uh, of our YouTube channel. And you may also request other, uh, other tutorials or other discussions related to physics or mathematics or even engineering problems.